Hi everybody, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to freeze some fresh beets. Now I have just one small bundle of fresh beets. There were only three in here and I consider these to be a classic example of what not to buy really but I wanted to do this video and this was what I had to choose from. The only reason I say what not to buy is because the tops are not in the best condition. You can see this one is broken, they are wilted and just not in the best of shape. So this tells me that they were sitting on the shelf for a while at the grocery store. But actually all the beets that they had at this point in time in my store looked this way. So I didn't have a lot of choice if I was going to do this video. They have not been washed yet. So what we're going to do is cut off the stems, leaving a couple inches here at the top. I'm just going to do this with a knife and I'm going to leave the root on this as well. Now this is probably the biggest beet I would want to get. You really want to get ones that are no more than three inches across and this is about that point. So I'm just going to put them in a bowl for now and we're going to take them to the sink and wash them really well and then we'll go to the stove from there and then in another video I'm going to pick my way through these greens and show you how to cook them. Alright you can see I put these in my glass bowl here and all I'm going to do is wash these really well under some cool water. Once that bowl gets filled up I can just use the water that's in the bowl and then give them another good little rinse. We just want to make sure that we get any dirt debris off of them because you don't want to be cooking that and you don't want to eat that so we're just washing them now why did I leave the root on why did I leave so much of the stem that helps to minimize the bleeding of the loss of the color pigments from the beet and now we're going to cover them up with some water no different than if you were going to boil a whole potato in its jacket all right, I have my pot on the stove. I've just turned it on high. I'm going to put the lid on here just to help bring it to a boil. Then I'm going to turn it down enough so it can just simmer and just cock the lid a little bit so that nothing boils over. And then when the knife will go through them easily, then I'm going to call them done. And then we're going to go from there. Okay, our beets are done. They took about 35 minutes or so, but they're going to take different amounts of time depending upon the size. Now I'm just going to get them out of here and put them in a bowl that's sitting here. You can't really see it. A bowl of cold water and we're just going to allow them to sit in that cold water until they are completely cooled down so that we can handle them. And then we're going to prepare them for the freezer. All right, our beets have cooled down and I've drained the water off of them. And the first thing I'm gonna do is put on some vinyl gloves here to help avoid staining my skin. If you do happen to stain your skin, a little lemon juice ought to be able to take that off. So now well, we want to get the peel and the root off of this. I'm just, I'm doing this on a plate rather than a cutting board because the plate will wash very easily. Whereas a cutting board, oh, yeah, I would probably have to bleach it out. So we don't want to do that. So now I'm just going to peel it. And the peel comes off really easily. I think you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just doing it with a paring knife but you can almost slip it off with your fingers. Yeah, I can slip it off a little bit, but for me, I'm so used to using a paring knife. I'm just going to do that. And I'm just going to do this with this one beat so you can see, but I'm going to do all three, but not necessarily on camera there. Okay, we just want to get the peel off of this, and it's about like a potato peel as far as it's not overly thick on there. It's pretty thin actually, but you can see we have the juice here and I'm trying to minimize what I get around and you may do the same. Now at the same time, we're going to freeze these. So I have a 
baking tray here with some parchment paper on it. And I'm going to freeze these in a single layer on top of that so that when they are frozen, I can simply take the slices and put them in a freezer bag or container and then take out whatever I want. You could freeze them in there all at once if you want to, but you're going to have one giant lump of beet pieces when you're done. And if you don't want that, you wouldn't be able to take out a little bit at a time, then this would be a little more desirable way to handle the situation. So, just cutting it the best way that I can this way. We're going to just lay these out on the tray, single file, so that when they do freeze, they'll freeze individually, and I can just put them in a bag, and then I can retrieve whatever amount I want. I'm going to put this in the freezer, and cut this one more. I'm going to put this in the freezer for whatever length of time it takes, half hour to an hour or so, and then we're going to transfer them into a freezer bag. All right, my beets have frozen enough. They're not completely frozen, but they're frozen enough for me to bag them up, and I've just got a plastic freezer bag here, and I'm just going to line them up in there and get them back in the freezer. You do want to label it with your date and make sure that you use them within a year for best quality. And they will be edible beyond that, but uh, the quality is going to deteriorate the longer you have them in there. So you do want to make sure that you use your frozen beets as soon as you possibly can. Let me know if you have any questions below. I do hope this helps. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Bye now.